Welcome our one and only Omar Renzamar, Jersey boy. Thank you so much. Like my friend Omar, who's created a ton of success because of what we're teaching here today. Omar Renzamar, tied with Omar Renzamar. You, you get the trophy. You really do get the trophy today. What's going on, everybody? Let's light up that screen for Karen. This is something that can really change your life, your business, and it can take it to a whole next level. So it's cre creating a magnetic ecosystem on social media. So this is going to apply for every single social media platform. So there's a book out there called Day Trading Attention by Gary Vee. He said TikTok was going to take over, TikTok was going to dominate, and TikTok was, well, TikTok was going to basically you know, tell people what to do. And that has been happening. This is what he calls the TikTokification of social media. And yes, every platform is adapting. So we either adapt to do videos, facelifts, face off, face on, face, face it. But videos is going to be like the way of getting you out there. And just to be clear, marketing and advertising are two different things, but they kind of walk together. You know, they're like their neighbors that one, one bowl sugar from another, but they walk pretty much together. Keep that in mind. So tonight, table of content, let me talk to you. We're going to be talking about what is an ecosystem? Who is your perfect prospect? Brand versus product. It's going to be something very quick because I don't want to, I'm going to have more and leave some for another training. Giving three Fs in marketing. I just did a live on that. If you haven't watched it after the broadcast, you can go watch it or watch it tomorrow on my Facebook page. Uh, I give the details of that, but we're also going to be touching on this tonight. Your perfect chat GBT prompt. It's gonna, this is going to put money in your pocket. So a lot of you are going to leave here tonight with a plan of action. Hopefully you find value and you're going to be able to make money. And last but not least, the seven places to find endless leads, right? So if you're with me, let's get the party started. Okay, first off, what is an ecosystem? Probably asking, right? Probably been to an aquarium, probably been to places where you see all this type of stuff. You probably went to the beach and you see everything around kind of like aligns together, right? To, to get into the own bubble. And as uh, the National Geographic Society describes it, a geographic area where all elements work together to form a bubble of life. Now, I don't know if you you would like to have a bubble of life on social media where this is your, your, your bubble, your world, and bringing people into your world where everything that's happening in there is for a purpose, for a big reason, but also is also changing lives. It's adding value to people and it's creating this place where you're going to you're gonna have, you know, that essence of not just growing your business as an extra, but you're going to grow communities. You're going to grow friends, people that really think alike. It's aligned with the purpose of being me. Like, I'm just being me because, quite frankly, <laughs> I post this stuff to speak to myself most of the times. And guess what? They talk to somebody else. So have you. May you have some, some experience like this. While you think you're speaking to yourself, trying to encourage yourself, maybe you're going to be talking to other people and people are going to start reaching out to you. This is going to start creating that ecosystem in many areas. So the three types of ecosystem, if you know, uh, and if you're taking notes, hopefully, if you want to screenshot it, I can, I'm going to give you a little heads up. I kind of put my little ninja marketer in there and anything. So if anybody wants to screenshot it, it's going to have it in there like a watermark. I apologize for that, but it's for a purpose. Okay. So one is the aquatic, right? Aquatic is water. Your profile is transparent, crystal clear, and enjoyable. The other one is testatorial or land. Your profile is pretty widespread, covering a lot of topics, but a bit like a mini forest that can use some weed plucking and quite a few things could, could be cut off your, your page, you know? So it's kind of like there. And, and, and don't feel bad about anything because I've been all three. <laughs> this is the artificial ecosystem. Your artificial ecosystem is when your profile is created based on your social media persona. Not quite clear on who you are. And this is where it kind of like it starts right here. I'm going to start you know, touching a little bit on your shoulder and, and speaking out with love. Because a lot of times we adopt this social media persona, trying to be authentic or genuine, trying to be someone. But in reality, it's not really us. Like one of the things I just discovered lately, and uh, and this is something I'm going to use for me, is is, is an acronym. <laughs> if you guys want to be, you know, in the same, aligned with it, but it's LIC, right? It's Loud Introverts Community. So all this is going to be sharing to, to talk to people. I'm, a, I'm an introvert. Inside of me, I am. I'm just loud. And I learned how to dominate a little bit my nerves and my, my fear and kind of like push myself extra. But now, thanks to a community like you people around me, I've been able to be myself without being judged, without feeling judged or, or pointed at. So that makes me 
okay, now I'm generous. Now it's me. I could be me. I could be goofy. And, and you know, and, and guess what? Some people are going to be repelled, and that's okay because they not, they're not my peeps. <laughs> but here, in these three type of ecosystem, as a network marketing professional, you must understand the importance of those three because we're connectors. We connect with people every day. So the reason a lot of people don't grow and probably on the struggle bus, it's because, and, and this is me speaking from experience. I'm not pointing at anybody. It's just me who I was. I was so worried about what others would think or say. Because, oh my God, if I present them the business, then it's just going to probably damage the relationship. If I talk to them about money, if I talk to them about my product, then they think I'm just going to try to sell them something. Guess what? No one cares. No flash. No one cares. Because at the end of the day, if you're really you, they love you for who you are. They'll hop on your posts. They're coming. They'll share your stuff and get back to you. And if you prospected them once and it didn't work, maybe down the road you want to share something else, just keep being genuine. Be yourself. But don't make it all about sales. Don't make it all about your business. Because this is a relationship business. And down the road, you're going to build a huge organization with people who be, go from being a, a an affiliate or a business partner and become family. We know that. A lot of us have been in here for quite a while. We know that people become literally our family. This, I made a post about this the other day. These are just, if you understand this, whoever understands it wins. What this means is, you look from left to right, products are built in factories. Brands are built in the hearts and minds of people. Why is that important? The first thing is you are not a finished product. We represent a company with a product. They have a brand, but you are not the brand, nor you are the product. You are your unique self. You are your brand. So when people look for me on, on let's say, on TikTok, you know what's crazy? I bumped into somebody the other day, and I saw him. He saw me on TikTok. You're like, oh, you do longevity, dude, from TikTok. I'm like, no way. Like, I'm just shocked because I'm little me. I don't have a whole bunch of, you know, followers like that. I'm not a huge influencer. This dude knows me because I'm the longevity guy on, on TikTok. I'm like, no, you didn't say that. No, like, yeah, I see your stuff, bro. Like, yeah, that's what... I'm like, what? So I'm hopping on the train. This guy's making it, like, really obvious. Everybody's looking around. I'm like, oh, my God, no, he did it. I was kind of like, yo, bring it down, you know? But it's who you become, that brand. So your brand is going to, you are going to be represented with your heart and your mind. And guess what? The product, yes, is going to be part of it because down the road we're going to talk about the product. We have to. But people will follow you because of how you make them feel, how you added value to them, and what you added to their life. You know what that's saying? They say that people will forget what you said, but they won't forget how you made them feel. That is very true when it comes to this. So that being said, Humans help maintain the balance of the ecosystem. So be human. This is all where I'm going to take you tonight. I really want to dig into this. Be human, be you, because you should embrace yourself. You have a uniqueness. You have beauty that the world needs, whether it's your smile, your charisma, whether you're funny, whether you, you're somebody who just adds all the time, who lifts people up. You have a uniqueness that makes you you. And people become magnetic to you for what you are, not just for what you can bring. Oh, my God, you could bring a product that could transform somebody's life. Amen to that. But it's the value added. They call it in real estate the prop value, right? The added prop proposition. They call that. This is also it's applicable in all type of business. So you're becoming an added asset and added value to people's lives. And I want you to be that, but just be human. You don't have to embrace anything else. So let's go to the important fundamentals uh, before we begin our ecosystem. If you look at this on the right, little square, I want you to look at it. If you want to take, you know, want to take a screenshot, go ahead. If you want to take notes, the ecosystem components. And I'm going to summarize it by the, what it says on the left. First, these are the three fundamentals. It starts and ends with you. If you look at that cycle right there, right? It goes you, content, prospect, duplicate, you, content, prospect, duplicate. It's all going to start and end with you. 
It's not egotistic. It's not something that's egocentric. It's literally who you are. Why? Because number two, your prospect, who's your perfect prospect? Who slash <laughs> shockers? You, it's just you two steps back. Who you were. So if you have a problem finding your niche, and like, how do I talk to people? Who do I find? Here you go. Probably going to help you out with this. And three, people do what they see you do, not what you say. And that goes to a basic principle, you know, even in the Bible, you know, when Jesus told them, the disciples, do as the Pharisees say, don't do as they do, they right? But it goes back because they were saying crazy stuff that they weren't applying and they weren't doing. But in today's world, in today's real world, especially in network marketing, people will do what you do. Because if you're doing a lean back and you're like, you know what, you're telling people to prospect, but I'm still you doing it, then you become managerial. And in network marketing, we're not employees. So, and we're not bosses to no one. We're uplines, mentors, leaders. The best you could do is become a mentor to someone, become that person who can guide them. So we lead by example. And here's a little side note. Here's a little side note on the bottom. They're kind of like got a little messed up there, but this bubble of life, this ecosystem and this bubble of life will never work well if you do not have a clue who you're trying to bring it in, bring it to, bring it, bring it to it. Like whoever you try to bring into your world, it's not gonna work. It's never gonna work if you have no clue who you're talking to. And to best do that is the best exercise is the man in the mirror, the man or woman in the mirror. Stand in the mirror, talk to yourself. Literally, it's, it sounds crazy, but it's really therapeutic. It's going to help you because you're going to help be able to understand. Sometimes we have facial expressions. You're, you're meaning good and you want, you're being all the good, but you don't have the right connection. You might have a different look. Maybe you had a bad day and you're kind of looking at them like this, but you're trying to say something nice, but you're looking at them hard. And then the message completely deviates because they're like, oh my God, like what the heck? Am I getting pow pow? Like, what is this? No, you might be saying something with love, but your face might not show the same. Anywho, the three F's of marketing. Like, oh my God, you know, well, get out of your gut and mind. It's all clean. But the first F is facts. Now, if you guys have been on here for quite a while and you've been on any of my BOPs, I always try to bring some stats. I bring graphs. I bring stuff that's happening. In our case, we could bring clinical studies, trials, et cetera, with the company, right? That makes it easier. That's something that educates the person and makes them glue them to you. It's like, oh, this is the person who got the information. They got the facts, especially in today's world with fact checkers. <laughs> and number two is supposed to be feelings. I don't know why I put feelings, but hey, it's a typo. Feelings. <laughs> Use them heartstrings to make a re make you relatable. I remember one of the, I was on a on a challenge a little while back, and my online mentors, uh, Stacey and Nicole, they were like. You know, you have this thing where you connect with people. You you know how to use their heartstrings. And, and that's something that people can develop, but you just kind of like have it, you know, innate. I'm like, no, I don't. I wish I could connect more with people. Like, my team would be huge. They're like, that's, that's not the point of getting, you know, the connection is not just the people you have on your team. It's how you connect with people around. And you have that to be relatable to like, people can sit there and say, they get me. You know, they really get me, and I'm, and that's what you want. At moms, if you're out there and you're probably doing laundry and or folding clothes, don't feel bad. Go live, record yourself folding clothes while you're giving value. Trust me. It elevates the whole trust factor to a whole next level. Because people are like, wait a second. This person is there. It's, like, it's just like me, but people are so in their head, and they're like, I don't want to show this mess. I got to be polished, you know, which takes me to the next one. Fun. Make it fun. A lot of times you see me pumped up and I'm excited. I'll start doing stuff. Like if you guys went on the Red Hot Topics, I'll bring some stuff and I'll compare it with others and try to be funny. Funny is money, but become watchable. Funny is money. Be creative, but not polished. Interactive, like ask questions to your audience, give shout outs, giveaways, et cetera. All this stuff is, all this stuff is fun. And people connect with you because they say, wait, wait, I can't, I can't wait to, to go on there and, 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 you know, hear Karen now. She always brings some good value. She makes it fun. And she's always bringing something that I can relate. And I'm also, this, I'm connected. Like, that's my peeps. That's the person I want to connect. Trust me. There's a lot of people out there like you. A lot. There's people right now, uh, Helena, she's on here and she's, she's uh, having like some breakthroughs, not just growing in numbers of views. She's connecting with people. And you would think like, oh, wow, people would say, well, social media is for young people. Uh, yeah, she's about 60 something and she's connecting with the people her age. And guess what? They love her because this is what it is about. You build your community, you build your people, and naturally people start loving you for who you are. So 
I hope your guys are finding value so far. Dan said, you can close now and say goodnight. I ain't done. <laughs> we ain't done yet. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. I hope that was helpful. Now, on social media, we're always going to have two buckets. These two buckets are going to get you where you want to go with social media. One is active. The other one is passive. How do we fill them up? We'll get there. But in our language, network marketing language, the active is when you go out and prospect, prospect, reach out to the person, go empty out your, your, your cell phone, empty out your friend on social media, wherever, or even cold. Because a lot of my people that I have now has been cold prospect. I don't even know how I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. So because I kind of like, I burnt out a lot of people, although there's a way to come back. So I'm doing a lot of cold prospecting. People that I don't know, never heard of me. We never, they don't know me from Adam. They don't even know I exist, but I just reach out to them. As the active one, because what I want to do is bring them into my world, bring them into my ecosystem. And then when they start seeing, whoa, this video, oh, wow, this is nice content. Oh, wow, he's a family dude. Oh, he's a faith guy. See, it starts going there, it starts building up. Now, whoever gets one of those and say, mm -mm, not my guy, they're going to leave. And that's okay. Now, my guy, that's okay. AI is a friendly virtual assistant. I was able to basically answer anything, right? Anything. <laughs> so you can imagine the stuff you can put in there that can help you in many ways. Now let's go to the second bucket, which a lot of us might be on a struggle bus because it is. And it's the passive bucket. In this case, you put out, put out a piece of content, you put out a video, expecting, praying to the... Pray to God that everything works out. You start lighting candles and praying and throwing incense to see if it happens. And nothing really happens sometimes because it's passive. That alone shouldn't discourage you. I've had videos with 340-something K, and I've had videos with 15 views. I don't care. At first, I was like, hey, that kind of like, it hit me. I went down. Now, I, because I've been a little bit in the experimenting side, experimenting side I got flagged a few times. I got shut, not shut down, but I got like, I, I wasn't able to post. So I was like, kind of like on Facebook jail. TikTok kind of gave me a little, you know, they they, uh, they they tapped me on the wrist. And because I was posting stuff, which now the guidelines are going crazy, but I know where the problem is. Uh, a lot of this stuff sometimes is controversial or it's your content is, if you're like, if you're doing reaction videos, Yes, exactly. If you're looking in the right places, I'm going to share with you the right places pretty soon. So that's going to be really on, really good. So a lot of times, this is why we shouldn't really necessarily be cold prospecting much. Because once you create the passive, people are going to start, that bucket's going to start filling in. Then you still do the active and then you have the passive. Now there's people who have, you know, by the grace of God, they have an extra uh, quality problem and they don't have to prospect because they have so many leads that they could just work from there. But that's not everybody. So though it can happen, don't rely just on that. This is why it creates the whole thing, active and passive, active and passive. So the reason I still prospect, although I have so many leads on different videos, is because I don't want to sit back and say, I got this. Because once those are gone, oh, mind you, you can find leads. Well, we're going to get there. I don't want to get ahead of me. You're going to find leads. Any, and once from here, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. If you, if anybody tells me uh, uh, tomorrow or a few days from now, like, you know what? I still can't find nobody to talk. I'm just going to point them to this training because I'm going to help any, any of them. So how do we fill them up? You see the bucket, you see the water all the way down there. Like, what are you going to do? Go through that jungle and try to get to that beautiful place and just fill them up. Well, it's funny how this works, but you know, there's a, there's a young lady that I've helped in another company. It's company uh, Vida Divina. And she started applying this. And just to be honest, you know, I have people, I don't know if they're on here, but I, I help people. I, I do that. And, you know, I've been able to give some tips to uh, Ruth, uh, Paula in here. Uh, I've also helped this, you know, this young lady in Vida Divina. And she started crushing me. You know what they told me? At least five people already that I should start doing trainings and getting charged for them because I'm giving out too much value. I'm like, you know, I should consider that. But it's because I love helping. Now, she started doing this. I gave her a very basic overview of this. 
And she started like glowing. Oh my God, I got so many people to talk to. How can I ever thank you? I just do it. You know, if you ever come really big one of these days, you know, just, I don't know, throw something over here if it's in your heart. <laughs> if not, then it's okay. But you start taking the action necessary. You start creating content. All right. So where are these people? How do I find them? How do I fill up these buckets? Well, number one, on your post and reels, on your friends' posts and reels, you can go to your friends' post and find them there. I've seen people who they're falling through the cracks. They're leaving people or they're leaving money on the table. Not that I go and, and, and necessarily prospect them for me, but I'll find them. And I'll create, I don't know if you guys remember, I did a bit uh a training about a couple of months ago, and it was how to how to you know have the you know great conversations, leading them into the inbox, what to do to create chats, even if we're cross lines, what to say, kind of like that. You could do that stuff. Doesn't matter if we're cross lines or sidelines, down lines, up lines, it's best to work with the up lines, of course. But if you can't find them, then try to find a cross line and work with them. You're gonna find them, they're hiding in your in your posts and reels, friends' posts and reels. They're hiding in your messenger inbox, people you had conversations with that you probably haven't spoken to in a while. And I like this is where the funny also comes in. Be fun. You go back, you go back to them like, hey. <laughs> Oh my God, I think I dropped the ball. Hey, it's been ages. We haven't talked. How's your world? How's it going? How's everything going on with you? Just be you. And you go back to the conversation and then you could go wherever you left off. Because you're going to get to that point. And I'm guilty of this. I've done it many times. Where I go back and like, oh my God, I never sent the link or I did and never followed up. It, it happens because you're going to have a quality problem. You're going to have so many leads. You get caught up in the minutia and your daily, you know, uh, going out and hustling it happens you're going to find them on your following following your account on your or in your friend request yes if anybody on here has sent me a friend request and i haven't replied i really deeply apologize i just go i'm everywhere but there why because on facebook we can connect without being friends so that makes me like thinking we're already connected and we have conversations and everything if you might have sent me a, a request like a year ago, and I never replied, but we're connected. Also, people who are watching your stories. Oh, my God. How many times have you put a story, and then you look at you got 120, 200 views, or even if you got 60, 40, 20, go in there. Check it out, because there's people who are probably being so consistent. Hey, I love your stories. I love them. They do become raving fans. They're like, they're rooting for you. They're going out there. They're watching your stories. So you can go and pop up, hey, I see you stalking my page. I see you stalking my stories and just spark a conversation from there. Make them laugh, make them make their day. I don't know if you heard it today, but you're awesome. And a lot of times when you have already connected with these people, you can use the voice or use a video. I'm like more of a, I use both, depends on my mood. Sometimes I don't want to look all scrappy and crazy. I'll just send a voice, but sometimes I just, don't care much and I will send a video. If it's somebody I have a close relationship or at least we we talk back for quite a while, somebody who probably, you know, I just started talking, might not send a video, but I will say something. And you can find them in your in Facebook groups about your passions. Maybe, maybe you like gardening, maybe you like cooking. And I know, I know that they taught us and they taught us wrong and they have no fault. Our upline sometimes, not all of them, but they tell us to go into groups where that's health related, people who are sick or people who, you know, they need people who are looking for an opportunity. That's the worst we can do. If you go into groups that are like business related groups, don't you think other people are in there already? They're kind of like everybody's trying to hustle for the same sound and look so thirsty. I don't know. For me, it just feels like, like, no, no. I could do something better. So find other stuff, the stuff that you like. Let's say, Karen, let's say you find it to, I don't know, veterans that veterans in Florida, whatever, you know, and you bump into them, you have a lot to talk about without necessarily pitching them and try your best to become friends with the administrators. That's a win. Right there, when you start becoming friends with your, with the administrators, it goes to a whole next level because now you can actually comment on people now. Don't post about the business and maybe not the product so much on the group. Add value to them, but everything else, just bring them to your world. Bring them to the ecosystem. Bring them out from there. Spark conversations over there. Go into their inbox if they have any questions about PTSD or they had them. Oh, my God. You know, and anybody in here, uh, you know, was a veteran this year. Like, you experienced 
joy pain, and we're barely in our forties. What the heck is going on? Oh my God, I can relate with you. I know how you feel. Listen, you take them to the inbox. You know, I've been taking this, 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 this to help me out. Blah, blah, blah. It has eight different spices and it reduces the inflammation. Blah, blah, blah. You know, stuff like that. That you would know already what to say. That's it. Now you take them out of the group, but you're still in the group and you're adding value, commenting on people's stuff, rooting for them. The best thing we can do, and I love this because I mean, you'll say this from day one, like ever since I started this, and Mino says, we have such a powerful tool in edification. Our most powerful tool as a networker is edifying people because you lift them up. But guess what? That's not something that goes unseen. That when you say it, it, it bounces back. You know who also has this incredible ability? Dave. Dave speaks to you, makes you feel so important. He's dealing with thousands of people, but he'll give you that focus in that minute. And that to me, that stands out. Like giving you that importance, making you feel important, seen, heard, and understood. That's and that's all we really need to duplicate as networkers, making people feel valued, that, that they're appreciated, that they're loved and heard. Everything else will flow naturally. And last but not least, you're gonna find them in your contacts or in your friends list. Go out there, let's talk to people. I have over like 3,400 people on my Facebook as friends. I haven't gone through all of them. I got like 16,000 followers. I have not gone through all of them. So I'm not going to, I'm not telling you something I'm like, oh my God, you know, I already did all this. No, I still got work to do. I got videos with 400K that have over a thousand comments. I haven't gone through all of them. It is a quality problem, but I'm getting there. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to focus just on that, leave my job. You know what? I'm going to be rich because these people are going to come in. You know, I go that route either. At least in my case, I, I can right now. I can't just leave my job and go crazy, especially with, with everything happening right now. God forbid, you know, we want to, but listen, we have to take the action necessary because at the end of the day, <clears throat> you're, getting, you're getting paid for performing, for taking action. So you, you, you're not going to get paid just, you know, for thinking or manage it, a managerial way to run your business because I even made that mistake for our Brazilian people. I got to a point where, okay, I got like four or five diamonds. I'm going to tell them what to do. Mm, it, it don't work like that. You know, and I, I was lucky because I had like accidental leadership. I didn't know what I was doing. I still was growing. Then you start being, you start maturing in this. You start growing as a person. Then you realize like, you know what? They're always going to follow what I said before. They're always going to follow what I do, not what I say. And trust me, when you go to that level of leadership and you're just transparent, um, yeah, there's times where you have to kind of like push on people and let them know, but that's something you break it down from day one. What type of leader you want me to be when onboarding? You want me to, there's going to be bad days. There's going to be bad days. It's not if, there's going to be when they come. What type of leader do you want me to be? You want me to let you be and just, you know, break, break it off, kicking rocks and whenever you feel better, come back. Or you want me to remind you why you started in the first place. Most of the time they say, yeah, just kick me in the bar. Not all of them take it because when you come back and say, hey, you told me you had dreams and, and aspirations, I don't see you taking action towards it. Oh my God, you're so harsh, man. You don't understand. You know, people like that. But that's where you know where people, okay, they weren't that serious. So oh. anyway, we won't have a community if we destroy the environment. Morgan Maxwell. And although it, nor it really said we won't have in an, uh, like a whole eco. I don't know the word he had before, but I just changed it for community because in our case, we need to have community. And if we destroy the environment, you know, the gossip going here, this and that, and talking about the others or not giving, paying the right attention, not leading by example, all this stuff, it, 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 it really hurts an organization. Um, if you've been in here for quite a hot minute, you've seen at conventions how sometimes there's some device division that shouldn't happen or things that just happened because they never spoke for well from the top, we're the change, we're the difference. You know, and I thank God I can go, I can go into a SEND meeting as much as I can go to a Juan Rosales meeting, as much as I could be over here with Dave. And that to me, that to me is fulfillment, that I've been able to do something that not everybody can do without necessarily having the, pay, the pin and being seen as a pin, or being seen as somebody who's actually genuinely wanting to bring people together and when they can see that without me saying it, it makes me think that I'm probably doing somewhat of a good job to do and become myself because that's all I want to do. I want to bring everybody to a peaceful place where we can all be us, man, and nobody else can take it from us. So, like I said, a lot of this stuff, I got it 
from the course, the SOS met, uh, 60 method. Uh, these are some of the, the trainings that are there. Most important extra, both bonus trainings or eight trainings. There's 120 lessons in this course. So if you are looking at me right now saying, well, when are we going to get your next training? Maybe in eight weeks or once a month or every two months. We don't know. And you're thinking about, I want to get the information before the year ends because I want to know what actions to take. This course is still available. You can, so you can still get it. I'll share the link right now in here. Um, I can assure you, I haven't gone through the whole thing, but I can assure you, this information is going to take you ahead of 90% of people out there. Don't ask, don't, don't take it from me. Ask Dan, ask Dr. Rosanna Ho, ask people who have, who have bought it. So they can tell you, and you don't take it from me. That's one thing. The full disclaimer, yes, I do have a, an affiliation with them, uh, but I'm dropping it here because I also got it. I haven't been through the whole thing. I'm learning, but everything I learned is what we learned already back in June. And I'm kind of like bringing it to you now in October. So I don't want to be that guy like, damn, I already knew all this stuff and never brought it because I don't have the time to give you all the, all the stuff. I wish I could be here two, four hours and just give you deeply because I, I love, there's a lot of stuff in there I know I could train and not to brag, but Dan knows I was featured in their course because I implement. I take stuff, I trip, I fail forward, I mess up, I'll eat dirt just to make it better so I can bring it to you already done. And I'd rather do it that way instead of saying, let's see if this works out. And then you'd be like, you know what? It's, it's not all that. No, I'd rather make the mistakes first and then bring it to you when it's already cured and better in a better way and looking better, even though I got hit by 20,000 bucks and ran over while I was trying to make it happen. But I'm honored. I'm honored to be here, <clears throat> honored to be part of this, and honored to be alive in this time. Be able to see each and one of you grow at different paces, but growing for the better. And I don't, I don't need the recognition. I don't need you to tell me it was because of what I added. I just want to know that I did something. I did something of value and that I added to your life. And I can smile. And one day when I see you on stage walking and I said, you know what? I'm so glad they made it. And they listened, they implemented, they applied. That for me, that's fulfillment. That's happiness.